This is just one idiot's opinion on the internet. If you disagree, that's cool too. Whenever a Kickstarter game turns out to be a gem, people love it forever, often becoming a cult classic. Shovel Knight and Ukulele are perfect examples of this. What we often never think about is for every one Kickstarter game that hits, they make about a hundred that crash and burn. We never really hear about these games, or at least I don't. So when I heard that there was a new Mega Man-like game being funded by a Kickstarter, I just assumed that it would turn out great. I mean, just looking at the bare mechanics of Mega Man, it seems like it would be hard to mess up. You run, and you jump. Not overly complicated. On top of that, the project lead of Mega Man worked on the game and called it basically a spiritual successor to Mega Man. So we're starting off good. Two days after the Kickstarter was launched, they met their goal and by the end of it they were over 400% of their original goal, meaning they could add more content and really polish it up. After multiple delays to the game though, I started to get a little worried. Not so much that the game would suck, but more that it would be cancelled. Careful what you wish for, I guess. Let's get this out of the way right now. Your basic 2D platform game probably doesn't have much of a story. I can't say that I remember any story in Mega Man games up until like Mega Man 7 maybe? Could be wrong there, but nonetheless, there's not a lot of stories to these games. This is 2017 however, and if you're going to try to implement a story into your game, it better be half decent. Mighty No. 9 stars a robot named Beck. He's the ninth unit in the set of Mighty No. Robots. You also have Dr. William White, the designer of the Mighty Robots, Dr. Blackwell, the inventor of the XL technology, Dr. Santa, who also worked on XL, and created your irrelevant partner, Call. The story starts out with a computer virus that attacks all the robots in the world and causes them to go rogue. Beck and Call seem to be the only ones unaffected. Beck possesses a unique ability. It allows him to assimilate all the XLs of the robots when they have attained sufficient damage. By assimilating the affected XLs of the robot siblings, Beck is able to restore their original personalities. While Beck is out trying to restore his robot friends, Dr. White tries to find a solution to the problem. Meanwhile, the mayor of the city tries to put the blame on Dr. Blackwell, although the guy has been in a maximum security prison the entire time. After you've saved all your robot friends, changed them back to normal, and pay a little visit to Dr. Blackwell, you learn that the mayor is corrupt and wants to use the failed project Trinity created by Dr. White to overwrite robots with ease and essentially turn them into a military force. Trinity goes rogue and tries to launch a war, and Beck comes in and saves the day as per usual. As much as I could do without another corrupt government story and rogue robots trying to start a war isn't exactly original, the story isn't awful either. It just feels kind of lifeless, which is ironic since it's a game about robots. The other robots feel shallow and outside of a few lines for each of them feel completely irrelevant to the plot. Overall, it just seemed vague and things just kind of happened until you beat the game. Okay, we're going to skip gameplay for now and I'm actually going to cover that last this week, so on to aesthetics. Running through the levels is hardly memorable and the characters and enemies really don't inspire much. It can often look like they just lifted the assets in the Mega Man games and placed them in this game. The lack of creativity is shocking for a game that was delayed as much as this one was. The game is a 2D 3D mix, but honestly, they might as well have just made it a 2D game in the end. I mean, for God's sakes, the characters just stand there with an open mouth while the dialogue happens. It's 2017, guys. Or 16, I guess. Anyways, animate some moving mouths, Jesus. I get the design of the game was supposed to be like Mega Man, but you probably didn't need to rip off the visuals from the NES games. I mean, come on. All that being said, the music's actually not half bad. I kind of liked some of the tunes, and they were actually pretty catchy at times. Mighty No. 9 might last you 5 hours, and that's probably being generous. The game does come with a couple of challenge modes, but for the most part I got bored really quick with them. In actuality, the game should probably only take 2-3 to three hours, but gameplay has a bit to do with extending that time, so let's get into it, shall we? Mighty No. 9 is your basic 2D platformer game, straight out of the Mega Man handbook. You go through each stage in the game, running, jumping, and shooting robots till you hit the boss and try to absorb his power-ups. Sounds pretty simple. On top of that, Beck has a new ability known as Dash and can be used to cross big gaps or absorb regular enemies for more points. Instead of just shooting enemies and killing them, you can dash through weakened enemies stringing together combos. 
This allows you to gain temporary boosts such as speed and strength. When you defeat a boss, you gain a special ability. Each ability you gain has its own stamina bar and can be drained and recharged over time. Getting through the stages in the game is not overly difficult except for one big issue. Frame rate drops. Let me reiterate, this is a 2D precision platforming game. You go up, you go down, you go left, you go right. Not that complicated. But when you are trying to dash from platform to platform and the game just decides to turn into a PowerPoint slideshow, you're pretty much at the mercy of the game. It would be one thing if this happened every few stages or so then it might be tolerable, but it happens every stage and seemingly at the most annoying times. You can also grab onto ledges supposedly. I say supposedly because I don't know what counts as a ledge in this game. Sometimes you grab the ledge and live, other times you just dash into the wall over and over again until you have your slow inevitable death. So okay, fine. You happen to die a lot and most of the time it was just the game flipping you off. But even that wouldn't be so bad if in between each death you didn't have time to go make a sandwich, some popcorn, maybe, or better yet, go to Walmart and buy a different game. Oh, there's an idea. Oh, by the way, the entire time I've been talking, the game is still loading. Okay, I think I've proven my point. Cut to the next clip. Oh, what do we have here? A boss fight. And I'm dead. Cut. So when you reach the boss fight, it's kind of a coin flip again. Some bosses I found insanely tough, others were a cakewalk. The best solution I found for the harder bosses is just to keep dying. There comes a point where the game just starts handing out power-ups, health packs, and anything else it can throw at you to help you get through the fight. The game also lets you set the amount of lives you start with, though why would you start with anything but 9 in this game is beyond me. The game does have a scoring system in place, but it's widely irrelevant. And pointless. No pun intended. Chaining robot absorptions together can get you combos and more points, but none of that matters because whenever you die your score is set back to zero, and you're probably going to die at the boss if not for some other garbage reason, so you most likely end up getting a D rank at best. If for some reason you can't get enough of this game after the main story, then you can do the challenge modes, but every challenge feels the same with just a different power up each time. It's sad to say, but I could have lived with one or the other frame rate drops or loading screens but having both just makes me feel frustrated to no end. I really wanted to like this game. I love 2D platformers. It's what I grew up on. I still look for them to this day, but this game is a black mark on the genre. For a game that was delayed as much as Mighty Number no. 9 was, I really thought it would have turned out better. Maybe not fundamentally, but at least visually and with a little bit less loading times. The sad part is, when the game runs properly, it's not terrible. Don't get me wrong, it's woefully unoriginal and lifeless, but the gameplay has some potential to it. Either way, this game left me feeling incredibly disappointed. But hey, that's just one idiot's opinion. If you disagree, feel free to tell me in the comments below, and if you enjoyed any part of this video, like, subscribe, all that junk, and I'll be back for week number 8 with hopefully something a little less disappointing.